Welcome to this edition of Road Trippin'. Alec Clifton, Richard Jefferson, he's back. Channing Fry is back. Richard has computer issues, app issues, not enough storage issues. Channing had flight issues, travel issues. What is going on with the Road Trippin' team? It's great, man. This travel, after, yo, I have a conspiracy theory, Channing. Oh, here we go. After the Alaskan Airlines flight, that, that thing came unhinged. Alaska Airlines had to cancel a shitload of flights. So then they start shipping their, you know, passengers to other flights, which makes the flights either a little delayed because there's too many or there's not enough. But then other airlines are also checking their planes to make sure that they don't have those same issues. But the planes that I've been on have been some of the older planes, oldest planes I've been on the last five years. Usually I'm on like a brand new plane whether it's Delta, American, United, Alaska. Since that thing, I've been on crazy old planes that some of them don't even have like the little TV in front. They don't even have like nothing. It's Aww. crazy. Aww. Aww. I know, I want to feel bad for you, but you also spent all week last week in Paris. So. Aww. Yeah, I was, I, I, I was very tired when I was there, but it was awesome. <laughs> hey, USA, the, the Olympics is going to be a shit show out there. It's well, not I even... See. Dude... Everybody in Paris is already hype. Then the NBA is hype. Then you got to think from NBA fans, right? Paris is huge basketball. Huge. Love basketball. You have LeBron's last Olympics, KD's last Olympics, Steph's last Olympics, maybe Kawhi's last Olympics, maybe Paul George's last Olympics. You have um, whether Joel Embiid's first Olympics as an American, not as a French guy. He's going to get booed the whole time. Then you have guys like Drew Holiday's last Olympics. Then you have Jimmy Butler. Then you, those other guys, like to have a team that stacked out there is going to be like, you'll never get a chance to see the NBA's top three to five superstars in one place, seriously playing to win. It's going to be like 92. It's going to be like 92 when it was like, or 90, 93 to drink. What is that? 93, 92? Well, no, no, no. There's I'm difference. not sure that's what he's turning the, his head on. Yeah, the <laughs> dream, a couple of things. One, the dream team, <laughs> they weren't really playing. They were doing exhibitions and winning by 50. These guys got to actually show up and play. Right. These they guys got to show, show up and play. What was it? 07, maybe? 08, 07, 08? What was that no. team where it was like Kobe and LeBron and Mello? Oh, wait. Beat the shit out of everybody. Oh, wait. No, they didn't beat the shit out of everybody. Bro, we're going to work. No, we're going to work on our Olympic knowledge. I'm tired, dude. I don't even know what time it is, to be honest. I, I don't know. What, yeah. Uh, Shut up, Richard. Uh, uh, is something going on with Arizona? Because you had a blazer shirt on and then you switched to this Arizona jacket. What's, yeah, you, well, you guys were thing? talking about, you know, why Allie looks all dolled up and we look like homeless people. And I was like, you know what? Let me put on <laughs> something nice. And I believe in our new head coach since the other one fucked us. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, we're a fan. I'm a fan. He's a Tucson guy. Yeah. Hopefully he stays and, I mean, he got a lot of pressure on him. Hopefully our two best players stay. We were talking with, uh, I forgot who we were talking with, but we were just talking about NILs and how college coaches, when they get a new job, they get bought out of their contract. So, like, we had to they pay get bought, the guy. They, do they, I don't know if they get paid. Do they get paid to leave? Yes. Wow. Can I was a fan of Tommy Lloyd when he dropped the F-bomb at y'all's um, Midnight Madness in front of 15,000 people. Like, it was Love it. his middle name. Yeah. Love it. Tommy right. fucking Lloyd. Oh. Yeah. Touche. Um, all right, let's get to some uh, NBA basketball talk, shall we? Let's throw some truth or trash because we didn't get to any of that last week. So it'll just kind of be an icebreaker, crack open the conversation. Uh, truth or trash, John Morant's season ending shoulder injury all but eliminates the Grizzlies from playoff contention. Trash. Without the that injury game. with Desmond Bain. They're trying, yeah, they're trying to lose now. No. Dog, I've just called that game. I'm looking at these young guys. They don't play like young guys. I don't know what kind of player development they have. Now, obviously, they're going to struggle. Obviously, they're going to struggle. But if Desmond Bain can come back, if you have Triple J and Desmond Bain, and let's say they go make a move for a big man, like a, a tall guy, so that Jaron Jackson doesn't have to play the five, they I, th- I say they have a better chance than Golden State does. Way to go out on a limb there, Channing. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're making, I just think they right got now. more in the tank. I just think they got more in the tank. And those young guys, they're, they're playing for new contracts. Memphis is four games behind Houston at 11. Uh, yep. You know what? I think they're going to try, but they'll probably Did end up change 11. change your mind? <laughs> yeah, I thought they were closer than that. 15 and 25. The Warriors, 18 and 22. I don't see Houston. I think Houston gives the Lakers a run for their money at not, at 10 and 11. What does Utah do at the at the deadline? Do they trade Laurie? So, okay, the Grizzlies are 13 and 25. 15. Or excuse me, 15. 15 and 25. 15. They've won the last game, 5 and 5 in their last 10. Yeah. Man, so, are we still going to stand by that? Are we still gonna, are we going to stand by that? No, nah, I think they get 11. I think they get 11. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was just I was going to let the numbers speak. Yeah, yeah. Was, five spoken. is too much. That's a lot. Five is a lot. Okay, so you guys are both going um, trash. Trash. Truth. 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 Yeah. Truth. Truth. I was always yeah. going truth. I just wanted to wait for Channing to to. to but to I do the... like their young guys. GG's no, I, nice. I like their young guys. Vince I like Williams. Guys. Think about how good. I, I obviously it's a one game thing. Vince Williams, Jr. was impressive. He picked Steph up full court all game. I think Steph only had like one three. He like stuck to the game plan and made huge plays down. There. I was like. Who is this guy? And the fact that the Grizzlies have Ja, Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart, and they ben don't have Ja, they don't have Desmond. No, I'm Bain. saying it, oh, next year, I, next I, year, I, I, and they're gonna have a they're gonna have a top pick. I think that's what they want. I think they want to have team. if they were smart, call, cash it all in, rest your guys, get yourself a top five pick, get a healthy Bain, a healthy everybody. Mm. Then all of a sudden, you're now working with something. Yeah, if they can get a tall center. Or trade that pick and get a NBA center. Because Jaron is so much better when he's not having to play the center all game long. If he's playing a four, that's a tough lineup. You mentioned the NBA trade deadline. That's obviously February 8th. So we're less than a month away from that. Last week, we talked about it pretty in depth when it comes to the Warriors. Draymond just came out on his podcast. Warriors are 18 and 22. He said he's heard everything just as much as we are when it comes to all these discussions. Everyone in the mix of being traded here or there. Besides that of Steph Curry, he points at the fact that they do have a new GM, so he doesn't really have a feel and vibe of, of what Dunleavy, as he gave him a lot of credit, by the way, um, will do or how he will operate uh, as the Warriors haven't been very active throughout his tenure with the Warriors at the trade deadline. What deal, realistically, say they make a trade, okay, because that's a lot of the conversation, what could they make in the next 20 days? What would you like to see for the Warriors? They got to retool it all. They got to retool it all. I think Draymond, to me, is is one of the most untouchables. Um, is one of the most untouchables just because, not saying because, one, I don't think his value. I don't think a team wants to take on a guy that could get a, a, a flagrant foul, and next thing you know, he's he's out for 10 games because he does something silly. So that value for him um, is around the league. And then I think just – when you look at how he plays with Steph, like he actually contributes to the success of Steph. And so I think you try and everybody else on the table. And I think Clay is the last one if we're if we were gonna talk about it. But Kaminga, you know, obviously Chris Paul is a as a salary dump. Everybody is there is on the table. Every single Moody, all of those guys. And I'm not saying that they need to go 2018 where they just scrapped everybody. Right, and they just made a bunch of trades, uh, trades uh, with the Cavs, like how they did it with LeBron and those guys, like how LeBron, how they switched up the entire team. Oh, you're talking about how the Cavs, did Cavs. That. That's what I'm you're saying. They don't need to go two thousand, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because ultimately you still have a player that can lead you to a championship. It's just the pieces around him don't look like championship pieces. I, I honestly, if if I was Dunleavy. I have a conversation with Kerr and the ownership and go like this. Blowing it up now does this, what we've done, what the Warriors have done, no justice. So are you okay with me at the trade deadline going and getting veterans that know how to play basketball, right? And some defenders. They are absolute trash defensively. Mm -hmm. And they have to work so hard to score. And if Steph doesn't get 30, they're not winning the game. Clay doesn't, he has these bursts of like, oh, Clay's back. 
And then the next game, you're like, oh, there he is. Wiggins. Oh, he has three good plays. And then he disappears the rest of the game. Like what sucks about Kaminga is <clears throat> he'll have three or four amazing plays. And then you'll be like, but he just gave up 18 points through bad fouls. So like Kaminga needs a chance to go play on a team like Detroit or Houston or even Orlando, where he can make some mistakes where he's with younger guys. The Warriors need length. They need veterans. And they need guys who are committed to the defensive end. If it was me, I would say I'm going to go for this at trade deadline. I'm going to keep Steph, Clay, Draymond. If Whatever happens this year is whatever happens this year. During the summer, the day the season's over, everybody is up. Steph, where do you want to go? Clay, where do you want to go? Draymond, where do you want to go? I, I think it's over. I think it's over personally. And I would give them the whole summer to go to where they want to go instead of having a Portland Dame Lillard situation. I'd have that conversation with them during the summer and say, thank you for your time. We need to go in a different direction. And you don't believe me. Why are you looking like that Chihuahua meme? (laughs) Well, I was just more thinking like the Dame situation, like Dame never won it. Right. So they so they looked at it from a standpoint of like, you, you're not going to be the guy. We're not going to put the pieces around you to win it. So I see the similarity there. Uh, so I see the similarity there. But Steph being an icon, there is a, I think there is a level of responsibility that franchises need to keep those types of players. Ooh, you got to get Richard. Well, they, fucking somebody. That's not their. We, that's Dude, fucking it's somebody. It's more than just so, somebody. So, you so need what, like. So what you're saying? So what you're dude. saying is just you're saying is trade your whole team, just go into tanking until you can magically get another Steph in 25 years. Because don't no, forget, what I'm saying team. is Richard. Hey, hey, listen, everybody has their time. You give it this year. No, no, no. I no, no, That's fine. What I'm summer, asking you. What I'm asking you. I, I hear yeah. your point. I'm, I'm asking you a simple okay. question. So you're saying that the Warriors should trade everybody and just get assets and start their whole franchise over. Steph just led him to a championship two years ago. So you're, and that's the problem. You keep still thinking how that How the this fuck is that, is that a problem? You're not oh. even close to that team. Richard, they're 29. Yeah, so you trade there. the other 12 motherfuckers around him and Richard, you're trying to... Richard, I've watched this team th- in person three times. They are a solid team. They're a solid team at best. You still have a you still have one of the top seven players in the okay. NBA. Okay. And you're saying I, I get it. So maybe trade Clay, get somebody younger. Maybe trade, may, maybe trade Moody and Kaminga, bring in a veteran. Maybe you know what I'm saying? But you don't just get like you don't give up on a once in a fucking generation talent because you're like, ah, eh, the guys around him. It's not Steph hasn't declined. The guys around him are. So you gotta trade the guys around him. I just don't I just don't think that giving up Steph when Steph's got probably three more years as a top ten three, four more years as a top ten player in this league and a guy that can lead there's only six guys currently right now. There's only six guys currently right now that have led a team to a championship. Only six. And one of those six is also Kevin Durant, who joined up with Steph. So to give up on Steph and say go where you want, I just it's I don't I feel like that's aggressive, Steph. Channing. No, no, no. It's not giving up on Steph. But as a responsibility to the organization, you have stepped. There's no, number one, you're doing justice to him by giving him an opportunity to maybe go win somewhere else. And you can get the best pieces back to ramp up your your um, your rebuild for your team. You say, hey, at the trade deadline, I will trade away our young pieces to get. So better you'd rather do a rebuild. You'd rather do a rebuild. In the summer. You'd rather do a rebuild. I'm like Steph, Steph, Clay, and and Draymond are not a package deal. You can get rid of those other two fuckers and keep the one of the best players on the fucking planet, right? That's like Richard. There's no three players right now that you could trade for Clay and Draymond. You just made your 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 you're not making your point at the beginning. Draymond right now has only played in Golden State. What system can Draymond fit in? where he could just automatically change a team. Now, well, okay, and Clay is showing big time decline in his game, which happens, but he's still a great Clay is still a great player. None of this is, is about a, them. None of it this is, is about, about them because it's about one back? person. It's about one person. What are you it's getting back for everyone else to help Steph? That's fucking what I'm that's, that's your that's your that's your job. I, that's what I'm saying. That's not my job. What I, what, no, no, what I'm, and you what think I, that they have that? They have that ability I, to do that, Rich, is what you're saying. No, I, what I am that. saying yeah. is this. You don't give up 
on a once in a lifetime talent. That's what it's like trading when, LeBron. When do you it's do like it? trading. Le, it's like oh well, you know. Though, so that so the Lakers the last couple of years they were like oh we should just trade LeBron and trade AD and start over. Okay, LeBron and AD had health issues, and LeBron is thirty nine, and they've tried to build around him. Right, they've tried. And so honestly, you should trade. So you should. So you should trade LeBron and AD because using the same logic, like they won a championship LeBron three years and ago. AD are different than Steph and Draymond. AD is. I'm a, not. We're not. No. 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 no, no. I'm talking. I, Draymond and Clay out. It's Let's, not. Okay. It's about one. This is about one player. Can okay. we put a team around Steph? It doesn't matter who the fuck, who the fuck it is. My thing is this: I would trade those two fuckers to try again with Steph. Steph is the and focal point. you feel point. that that is a better option than Channing's option of let's just start all over. Yes, let's yes, just, that let's is it. Go. Let's, like, let's start all over. They will the not, if, they let, if, they, if they let Steph go where he wants, Steph can, will win another championship. You, it's just you're going to get the most out of that package for the Warriors. The fuck out of here. Yeah, you're going to get the, the most, most out of out fucking of Steph Curry. You know what else they have? They have the yeah. Chase Center. And if they're wheeling out the Memphis Grizzlies versus putting Steph in that uniform, they're not going to be sold out every single night. Steph is the most valuable player, not named LeBron, and it's by a gap. So to trade him, you're lowering the value of your franchise. You're lowering the value of, like, your ticket prices, your TV ratings. Steph is the reason why they're on TV. You just don't give that up to rebuild. If the minute Steph is gone, you will not see those fuckers on television, like, for for three years, hopefully. So you're going Dirk Nowitzki. You're saying we're going to go Dirk Nowitzki. You're going to stay in this jersey, and we're going to be bad. But Dirk Nowitzki. But this is the thing, though, Channing. Day. But Channing. But Dirk Nowitzki was didn't lead. It's not like you're talking about two years ago they won a championship. Richard, the team last two year years they, they ago, were the defending we champions. Two years last ago. year they Guys, were defending champions. Last this, year, last this season. team is 13th in the Western Conference. And as much as yeah, I love shit. you two bickering at each other, they're I'm going to end it with this truth or trash. Very fitting. Draymond Green will go suspension free for the rest of the 23 24 season. <laughs> Truth or trash? He was trying. Hey, he was trying to be on his best behavior that game and not try to cuss out the refs. He's going uh, he no. to get, he get one suspension. He's going to cuss out the refs. Suspension? I mean, a light suspension, like yelling at the refs or something like that. Not, Too many. not physically hitting somebody. Too many tags. I'm still I'm still mad at Channing about that. I know you are, and we gotta we gotta put that behind Listen, us. Listen, you you gonna run Steph to the ground, and he's gonna can like, we phone a we friend? Doing? Can we phone in Steve Kerr? I know he loves the both of you. Can we get his thoughts on this? Steph Curry makes you believe you can do anything, and the Curry Elevens are specifically designed with ultimate bounce, grip, and stability to allow everyone to do their thing. New generations of ball players are coming up and showing the basketball world that the old rules do not apply. The future is exciting, fast, positive and hungry. This NBA season, rock with your favorite player and rep his shoes on and off the court. The Curry 11s are perfect for both the committed and casual ballers. The UA Warp Tech makes the shoe feel like it was designed for your feet, locked in no matter what you do on the court. Stop in your tracks with dual density UA flow cushioning and traction. It's an emergency break you don't even notice. Steph's 11th signature shoe steps into the second decade of his sneaker career, pulling colorway inspiration from the wonders of a positive and modernized future on and off the court. Take these kicks with you when you leave the scrimmage and rep Under Armour wherever you go. So do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curry is available now at currybrand.com. You mentioned that you talked to Steve Kerr on this topic, Channing. So I want to get both of your thoughts on this. I actually cried and I have zero tie to the situation. Um, The Bulls did their um, Ring of Honor ceremony. No MJ, no Scottie Pippen. There was that element of it. Um, No Rodman. Bulls fans then chose to, some of them, boo Jerry Krause so bad that his widow, Thelma Krause, uh, cried at mid like was seen crying, emotional about it all. Steve was awesome, I thought, when he addressed this. Um, Stacey King obviously started the third quarter talking about it as well. What did um, the conversation look like for you, Channing? Just Steve? reiterated that. We were like, what was that? He was like, what the fuck was that about? He was like, like, why? Why are you got why do you think that like booing this woman and her past husband is like the right thing to do? Right. It was just like it just it's a lack of empathy and awareness. Right. And it was like, regardless of how you might have understood what what happened between Kraus and Jordan or whatever team that was, this is they're a part of history. They're a part of like why the Chicago Bulls are the Chicago Bulls. And 
to boo her is like the craziest thing. Like it was so sad. So it, disheartening yeah, to see her. Disrespectful. Complete disrespect. What, Richard? Are you still mad? I'm so disappointed in the two of you. I'm so disappointed in the two of you. I'm Why? so disappointed because you guys are looking at this from a from a human standpoint. This is not human. Oh, this is sports. We do that. This is sports. This no, I'm, no, guys, guys, really quickly. Everyone watched the Last Dance. Everyone watched the Last Dance. Everyone saw Jerry Krause say. If you go 82 and 0 and win a championship, we're still breaking this up. God damn right you boo that man. Right? And you could say he's his wife. You were booing the last name. You were booing the last name. You weren't booing the wife. You were booing the last name. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys can sit up here and say that a grown man can be seen on the most watched documentary, right? The most watched documentary. Is it a saying documentary? That we're, go we're going to break Is up it? this team regardless of whatever. We're going to break up this team regardless of whatever. We're going to do that. They haven't been to an NBA final since. And you and we want to sit up here and act surprised that they would boo. It's not good. I'm not agreeing with it. I don't it, think. No, 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 no. You're missing wife? the mark there, Rich. I don't yeah, think any of dead. us are acting they're, surprised. They'll boo any name. They'll boo the last. They're booing the last name. They're not booing the whites. They're like, oh, they showed Jerry Krause. And they're saying, oh, here is Mrs. Krause. Boo. I don't agree with it. I don't, I don't agree, agree with, with it. You. Okay. All right. But go watch The Last Dance. The man was the last thing that the world knows about Jerry Krause is that he broke up the Bulls and they have not been to an NBA final since. That is the so last thing that fault? they saw. That's his fault? Yes, it's a, a huge part of his fault. That huge. they haven't won an NBA final since. I'm that's saying it's fault. a huge, it's a huge part that they that he broke up the team before the team. They were the defending champion. They were the three-time defending champion. He said, I wanted to start over a la Channing Fry over here. So he's talking about breaking up the Golden State Warriors, right? With them being like won a championship two years ago, right? So Jerry Krause broke you. up a three-peat. He broke up a three-peat, and you don't think you should boo that man? Oh, he, we're a part of NBA history. Did you? Are you guys forgetting the way fans work around here? Are we? Are like are you? I mean, they burn out. jerseys. They burn jerseys when guys get traded. We don't it's agree with it. Somebody's. They're still alive, Richard. Yeah, Richard. <laughs> my God, just because you're pissed at Channing does not. I know. I know. I'm, I'm saying. I, I. I just. I. I think that we look at it from a way too much of it, like of. If you watched the, if you watched it, you saw that he was made the villain in that. We watched it. Stop acting like we didn't. One, I, I, I'm you. not talking to and you two. two. I'm talking to the people. To, yes, you just yelled at both of us. Um, okay, you're right. Okay, so I you cannot believe that fans booed somebody. I cannot believe that. Did you watch the Clipper OKC game last night? It was great. By chance? Wow. Okay. It was great. Um, I want to take the Clipper side first. Okay. Um, and just get your thoughts on them because obviously 23 and 7 in their last 30 um, after that win over the Thunder. The Thunder were the number two team. I believe they still are because obviously Denver lost. Um, however, I need to double check that because the Thunder dropped back to back games in LA to the Lakers. And, and then obviously the Clippers. Clippers are fourth. The, the Clippers are fourth. Where is the Thunder? Are they two or three? Because there was a half three. game separating them in Denver. Denver. Okay, three. so two. Um, but nonetheless, James Harden saying that he's happy. Um, he wants to sign a long-term deal, according to Chris Haynes, to end his career with the Clippers. Are <sighs> Where are the Clippers in your mind? Uh, one, big shout out to Lou. Yes. Yep. Got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Number two. Crazy. It only took six games. That's insane. Yeah, but I also think as much as we had what if, the pressure of James Harden on another contract, they took care of, they took care of Kawhi. They're going to take care of PG. So rebuying into those guys is just doubling down on them, believing in what they have seen. Those guys are healthy. They're playing a good brand of basketball. Um, and I think you're getting the best version of James Harden. Now, as a media member, I didn't think it would happen this quick or happen, but I also am under the impression of what happens if somebody gets hurt, not knock on wood. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but over the years, that's what it's shown to trend that way. Also, even if they end up being first in the West, nobody, no, everyone's like, 
Okay, you got four Hall of Famers, and no one cares until the playoffs. What's going to happen in the playoffs? But to contradict myself is James Harden doesn't have to be James Harden in the playoffs on this team. He's like, hey, I just got to be a point guard. I can go give it to Kawhi. He can win us a game. I give it to PG. He can win us a game. T. Lou's going to win us a game. And then our bench and our scoring can win us a game. I just got to be a point guard. So I think we're going to see, hopefully, now that he's bought in, we're going to see the best version of this new James Harden. Because I don't think there's any pressure on him to have to run the whole offense. They need, I think they need some more big depth. But I, look, they got Plumlee back defensively. They got like Daniel Tice. I like I like who I like the, the Clippers are good. They're a complete roster. They got bench depth. They got stars. They got shooting. They got defense. They got all the things. Uh, great coach. Look, I, I put them as a top as as a top four team in this league, right? Across the board. Top four. Right. I think Boston's up there. Um, I put them up there. Um Denver. Um Maybe then after that, I would say maybe like Milwaukee, Sacramento. What? Okay. And you don't have Philadelphia in there. Oh, can I finish? Can I finish? I, I, no, can I finish talking? About Sacramento. It's... No, I'm saying I, what I was about to say is Sacramento, though there are certain teams that I don't necessarily believe quite yet. Sacramento is one of them. Minnesota is one of them. Uh, Philly is one of them. Do you have any reservations on the Clippers when it comes to the postseason? No. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think for me, I don't know what happens if you just say, Hey, make Kawhi Leonard beat us. And you just double team PG all over the place. They tried that last night, obviously. And then he PG got loose in the fourth quarter. Yeah. In the fourth quarter, but he was getting double teamed the rest of the game. And the problem yeah. was when the Clippers are, when their others are hitting threes, right? Like, uh, you know, man and them and, uh, Norman Powell, you can't double team. If you can't double team either Kawhi or PG, you're screwed because they just, you don't have enough great defenders. It's just yeah. the truth. Yeah, How no, far, I think they're the best. Okay. This is no, completely but, kind of off topic, hard pivot. How far do you think the Thunder can go? Uh, conference finals, maybe. Yeah, conference yeah, finals. Yeah. They're good. They're good. They're but young. Why are you acting like that would be no small or not well, a feat for them? Because no, I don't believe I don't believe in the Suns right now, even though they had a big win last night. I don't know about Dallas. I don't know about the Kings. I would say OKC is better than those three teams. So then that's the first or second round. And then let's say they go up against Denver. I'd probably 50-50, 60-40 Denver. They don't have any big – they don't have any bigs. And size, size. Yeah, they don't have any size. Teams, and right? they're good. They're good, and they're going to win a lot of games. Like, but I like I just feel like if they are going against certain teams, they could struggle. Like winning a championship, if they were to get Joel Embiid, if they were to get a Giannis, if they you know if they go against Jokic, I just I don't see a scenario in which those teams beat them in seven, and which OKC yeah, okay. can beat them in seven. So that that's only it. Yes, yeah, Shea he also has to get twenty plus for them to win. You saw yeah. last night they put the clamps on him. It was hard for OKC to like. Really, he does so much of driving into there, kicking, touching two feet in the paint, finishing. If he's not doing that and they're just shooting threes, it it, it, it kind of just becomes one dimensional. That was the same thing against Shea and the Lakers a couple of nights ago. Twenty, He only had 24 only. But having said that, to your point of how much of an impact and effect he has on others yeah. um, in different ways. We're going to talk about Embiid in a second. But first, um, I want you guys to give me your top players from last week. These are your Under Armour Game Changers of the Week. Which players or coaches impressed you the most? Channing, you're up first. I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with the Memphis Grizzlies others. I'm going to go with the others. I watched that game, and I was like, me and I and Eagle were like, who is this dude? And, you know, oh, he's only 18, and this guy is a two-way player. And for them to play... The way that they did, I thought that was impressive. So I'll say the others. It would be easy for them to go out and play, you know, I don't want to say loser basketball, but like not good basketball. But they played good basketball. They shot the right shots. They were patient. Like even when they were down seven, eight, their energy was still good. Dudes running off. You know, every player that came in the game, you could see, the, you know, the coach talked about him setting a standard. 
right, of, for everyone, regardless. And then those guys was up to that So I'm excited to see this new version of the of the Grizzlies. I would say the, the Jazz. The Jazz. <sighs> Yes. Why are you saying why why are you say like that, Allie? Because they're balling right They're now. balling. I, I would have to say the Jazz, Lori Markinen, that crew, some big win. They just I, I did one of their games early. They just fight. They got a good group of guys that play together when they're healthy, when they're this. Not that they're special, but it's just something like it it's good to see professionals being professionals. It's like it doesn't right. matter if we're picked to be here, it doesn't matter this, it doesn't matter where we got started, it doesn't matter, you know, if we got off to a slow start. When we get our rhythm, we're going to shout out Will Hardy. I think he's doing a great job. So great job. it'll be the Utah, Will, the Utah Jazz collectively as a team. Look at the both of you. Road Trippin's Game Changers of the Week are sponsored by Under Armour. Do your thing. Change the game. The Curry 11 Future Curries are available now at currybrand.com. Okay, Embiid's going to have to wait a second because let's go there. Do you break up the Jazz? Now what? Yes. Since December 21st, no, they're 13 no, see, and 2 I, in their last Be consistent. Games. Be consistent, Channing. Lori Markinen to the Golden State Warriors. Nah. I there's nothing the Warriors could give me to give to get back anything. <laughs> no, nah. you can give your future, you can give Kaminga, you can give Kaminga, you can give okay. Moody, you can give okay. multiple first round picks. Where if you're talking about in two or three years, if you're saying this run is over two, three years, those picks can actually be have a high level of value. Right. So uh, like you're going to tell me that he's an all star. But if you're like, we need to change our timetable. I think Kaminga, Moody, you know, Pajimski, give them all up. Then your bench is dude. The, the Warriors. Bench you're talking is, about the bench. You're talking about the bench, bro. That's what you're talking well, about. The, your Warriors. Bench. the Warriors bench is top two. <laughs> so if you get rid of Pajemski, who's actually solid for the he's price, really is very good. I'm like uh, uh, Davis and Pajemski, I obviously I don't want to get rid of them. But I, if I'm the Utah Jazz, I'm not. I'm not taking that. Well, you're not I taking need Kaminga. I need, I need you're, a, you're not taking. You're company. not taking. You need. No. You need what? Lori another All Star. No but this is the thing: if you're not going to bring in another All Star, Channing, if you're now saying that, hey, we but I need a team that's going to be shitty. I don't know if Golden State, since you want to keep Steph Curry, they're not going to just be. Shitty. They're never going to be last. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Utah. So Utah needs to change their timetable with Laurie Markin. They have an all-star. Their team's not going to be doing anything. He's going to win you too many games that you're going to be drafting in the, you're going to be drafting in the 10, 12. You, all you got to do is get rid of a couple players. And now all of a sudden you're drafting in the three, four possible one spot. Right? So that's my thing. Like they don't like. What about this? What about Laurie Market into uh to San Antonio. Give me those picks. They're not trying to win. San Antonio's not trying to win. They want I the know picks. that. So I want San Antonio's picks. I know that they're not trying to win. So give me your picks, San Antonio. It's this is a two-way trade. This is right. two like if San Antonio's not trying to win, they're not going to bring a player in that helps them win. They're in this <clears> they 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 they're not they're not they're still gonna be 11 12, but they're gonna be better. They're gonna build around uh uh Wemby. No, but I'm saying this year, they're they they have seven wins. They can get Laurie Market yes, and they one, win for the rest of the year. But they wins. don't have. But who are they going to give up? You because you, again, you got to give up. You got to give up Keldon Johnson. You got to give up. Um, yeah. You'd have to give up Jones, Kevin Vassell. Kevin Viss, like you are right. Devin Vassell. You got to give up Devin Vassell. So you got to give up those same guys. Now, if you tell me if I had to pick, the Golden State Warriors would more likely be the team that would willing to give up pieces. San Antonio is like, dude, why would we do something? We have a chance for a number one pick again this year because we're so bad. If we bring in Laurie Marketing for the last 40 games, maybe instead of the number one pick, we're drafting sixth or seventh. That right. defeats the whole purpose. You know uh, what I've learned about Richard during this episode? What? what? He holds grudges. <laughs> Okay, see, I like I like marketing the OKC. Now he's going to have to play the five, and he's going to have to defend those. Who was OKC which... giving up? Jalen Williams. Up. Oh, Bunch of picks. He's good. He, he's good. He's real good. good. God, why would he's you do good. that? Why would they do that? Lori Mark uh, is really two, good. Lori Mark is, is really good. Lori, right, Lori, now, Lori Mar- right now, right now, you're going to have to give up more than just Jalen Williams. But you also don't have the money for all them. Lori Marketing's money is already what it is. 
and where Jalen Williams has an opportunity to make a lot of money, make a lot of money, and they have 36 picks. Give me one of your young pieces that you're eventually gonna have to pay and give me five picks. I'm with that. Here we go. Um, we agree on something. Oh fuck. So nice. God. Um speaking of San Antonio, as you're still thinking about it, Wimby Chet, who's your rookie of the year right now? It's Chet. because They're Vegas both. is lost. They they don't know what to do. They they, they don't know. I don't know, dude. Ch- what are Here's, you basing it off of? I think there has to be both of them. I think Chet is playing better basketball because he is forced to play that way because he's their third, fourth, fifth option at times. But he's really smart, plays the game well. He's amazing in his rookie year. But Wemby is the first option on a bad team, and that dude's having to get it out the mud. <laughs> I've watched too many of their games where I go, this dude could average 30 if he just had guys that like looked for him. I think the harder season to be had is Chet. Chet has to go into a season. They're the number one, number two seed all damn year. If he's making mistakes late game, if he's doing this, if he's a 50, 40, 90 guy, anything that he does, there's an elevated sense. Like Wimby can go out there and throw three turnovers in the fourth quarter. And it's just like, ah, they lost again. They're just figuring it out. But he had 27, seven and seven. Chet Holmgren throws three turnovers. He's sitting on the fucking bench, not playing. Right. So I just think that the the pressure is higher. And I know Chet had an extra year, but I think the pressure of being in a competitive, we're winning now every single fucking night, every Mm -hmm. single night we have, we are winning because we are in the middle of a battle. You're putting a rookie in that situation versus a rookie in a situation where you have a coach that's like, let's see if we can start Jeremy Sohan at point guard. They're just fucking around in San Antonio. So, like, he's going to have the stats. He's so good. I think Chet would have the stats if he was in a shitty situation. But I just find it to be much harder to be a a rookie in a situation where your team, there are some people that believe this team can go to the finals and possibly win a championship. They might be one piece away. And every day you have to compete with that pressure. That is far, far more intense. And I think that that should go into the equation. It's like, yes, numbers to a certain degree. But I it's just like, yo, this dude is in a fucking playoff situation every single night, Chet Holmgren is. And he's showing up and he's one of those dudes that's late game. He's making blocks. He's making shots. He's making plays. In a, in a, we're the number one or number two seed. Like that is. So you're penalizing Victor for not that's, being. People say that that's not penalizing. I'm not penalizing. It it's is. Just another fact. In late game, How is he's that? not even getting a chance. They're getting blown out. What is he going to do? It's like he's out there. He's balling, but it's like, okay, well, what am I going to do? I can't. So, okay. I'm not down 30. So I think that's a compliment. Is that a compliment? Is that a, is that a compliment to Chet that he can play well as a rookie in that environment? That's not knocking. That's not, that's not, let's, let's take that away from Wimby. Only right. thing I'm saying is that if I'm looking at the rookie of the year, right. we can go sheer numbers and we can, we can say, oh, well, you're penalizing Chet because you're penalizing Chet because uh, Wimby's got a shitty team and they don't give a fuck. That's not, that's not Chet's fault. And it's not, and it's not, and it's not uh, Wimby's fault that Chet's in a situation where he's under a tremendous amount of stress to produce every single night because his team is trying to get the number one seed, right? Like that's the only thing I'm saying. I was like, putting a guy in that situation is, is far ho- harder Take than to just away. be. I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with you on that, and I'm not okay. trying to be that guy. No, I, I think it's to. harder to go into a game and produce when you're like at his age as a rookie to go. What do what does my team need to even be competitive? If they not, need me to average thirty. They need me to do all these amazing things, and 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 still is not giving us a chance. So to me, you got to take their team situation as the smallest denominator and look at them as both their body of work as players. Or else, why did uh, Russell Westbrook win MVP when their team was six? No, 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 no. Let, let's 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 calm down. Let's so calm hold on. down. Should MVP because, only be on the better team? No, no, bro. He had he he broke a record that hadn't been done since okay, so like Joel and B last year. They were, I think, they were third. Y- yes, yes. So it should oh, have gone to Jason Tatum or somebody who was first. All I'm saying is that if there's a rookie that averages 19 points a game on right. 50, That's, 40, 90, and he does it for the number two 17. seed, and if he does it two, two, th- thank you for clarifying. Yeah, if he does are. that for the number two seed in the conference or the possible number one seed versus versus a team versus a team that is 
the worst team in the fucking NBA, and this second guy averages 22 second. points. No, he's not. You're just fucking disagreeing. He's first you're the fucking, second worst they're the fucking team wor- They're the worst team. They're worse no, than Detroit. Detroit is way they're worse. They're the worst in all of those teams. They're worse than all of them. No, they not. Detroit is the worst. Uh, oh, Channing, we're, we're, we're having a conversation about, about that situation, but okay. God, we are feisty today. No, we're not. Um, just, I'm just like, dude, it's like. It, it should be the smallest denominator. No, you know what it is? This is what it is. You know what? I played I played as a rookie and I went yeah. to the fucking NBA finals. I know the difference than playing as a rookie like Channing that on a team that didn't make the playoffs. There are right. two different situations. There's oh. one that's highly stressed where every night you got veterans and motherfuckers cussing you out because you made a game plan mistake versus right. Wimby. They're like, we're just going to figure out what he can do. And we know he's going to fucking be talented. But to say that we're going to just take away, oh, well, we're penalizing Wimby because he's in a shitty situation. Well, you're also penalizing if you're using this, you're penalizing Chet because he's on a fucking good team and has to produce with fucking all NBA players around him. That's fucking hard. Not the sadness of like, well, he's got to go score 30 and if they don't, their team, they're not trying to win. Spurs aren't trying to win. Actually, I'm going to say it off camera later. Paolo Paolo won last year and Orlando was not good. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, they they were were better than when it came to the rookie of the year because you're typically not on a great team. The team dynamic should be the the smallest denominator when you're looking at rookie of yeah. the year because that's a situation that's you can't saying. help. That's all I'm saying. I yes, Chet gives yes, he may get a plus Malcolm one. Malcolm Brogdon, his, Malcolm Brogdon yeah. won rookie of the year, averaging like 13, 14 points because he was the starting point guard for the number one seed. And as a rookie, rookie. as a rookie, he showed up and helped them get the number one seed. Malcolm Brogdon won Rookie of the Year. So, like, there is something to say when you can bring in a fucking rookie and a motherfucker can play like a veteran. There's just something to say about that. That's all. Joel Embiid, 41, 7, and 10 assists. Jokic, 24, 19 rebounds, 3 assists. Uh, Philly won 126, 121. Embiid scored 10 straight in the fourth uh, to get that win. One word to, to describe Joel Embiid. I mean, you gotta say he's pretty efficient. It's my thing. I mean, most of the year he's been beating the shit out of teams, so he's not even playing in the fourth quarter. Can the Sixers win an NBA championship this year? The percentage that the Sixers win an NBA championship this year? 20. Ooh, I'll give more than that. You're such a hater right now. How am I a hater? This is a team that hasn't been to a fucking conference finals since before I was in the league. In general, but, I'm not say, speaking to the rest 35. of the podcast. You do you, let's say 35. <laughs> Do you think there's a 35%? No, 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 Ali. I'm saying they haven't been to a conference finals. I still, been think, to a con- I still think the Milwaukee Bucks, they are great, but I think they have defensive issues at times, right? Obviously. <laughs> the Boston Celtics, I was talking to somebody in Paris about this. They're a big Boston fan. And they said, we got Al Horford to shut down Joel Embiid. I'm like, well, this is a different team than what has been before, right? And Joel has been different. The thing that I say that hurts the Sixers the most, one, yes, I agree with Richard. They have not been to the conference finals. Two, they rely on free throws. I think Joel Embiid is second highest ever of like point amount of points uh, that were from free throws that were his total point. I think it's like 13 or 14 or it's actually 30. Maybe one of those numbers is a big number of percentage of his total points are from the free throw line. So when you take that away. It's the second most. Second most. There we go. Who's first? Luca? James Harden. Oh, James Harden. There we go. You know that. You know that stat. But and then also, I think Ten years. Boston <clears throat> at times they're good defensively. I think sometimes they forget that they're athletic and settle for threes too much. Like they're just like, yep, we're just gonna get up fifty threes. Where it's like, no, like within the course of a game, you want to get up fifty threes, not like just chuck up fifty of them. But that's my on each team. Thirty five percent. You think no, I, I I think it's twenty and that's being generous. I just don't I'm just sorry, there's just too many teams that I would trust over Philadelphia. And if we're talking about the health of Joel Embiid, he missed games last year. He missed games last year, right? 
uh, in the postseason. He traditionally, his numbers don't go up. Jokic's numbers go up in the postseason. Giannis's numbers over the course of like when they've had good runs go up in the postseason. Joel Embiid is one of those guys that can put up historic numbers in the regular season. And then either he gets banged up, injured, or his numbers don't look, or he doesn't look nearly as dominant in the postseason. I can't like this dude has been second in the MVP or won the MVP the last three years. He's had a solid team, obviously, it's James Harden, but he's had a solid team around him and he hasn't gotten out of the second round. I'm sorry. We're going to add another 14 games, possibly. Like, if let's say he gets out of that second round and goes to the conference finals, goes to the NBA finals. Now, Joel Embiid and the body that we, you know, hope can stay strong. All of a sudden, this dude has to play that many more games in that type of excruciating situation. I, I just, I don't believe it yet. Too many other teams. Who are the other too many? When I say, when I say it's like this, like if you were to tell me OKC versus Philly in the finals, like fucking I'm picking OKC. What? <laughs> I'm picking OKC. Okay. Okay, I see Richard is combative today. Not no, I'm not being, I'm not, how, but again, what I'm saying yeah, is that, like, we're, let's say there were two Cinderella stories, because if both of them right. got there, in my opinion, they would be Cinderella stories. Good gracious, yeah. I, I, I would say this, right? I would, I would, I would pick that team. Yeah, because you talk about Joel Embiid. I'm seeing fucking, I'm seeing Kelly Oubre shoot fucking dribble up threes and shit. <laughs> let's just not make it about Joel Embiid. As right, a collective so. unit, that OKC, yeah, Tyrese Maxey. Fucking baller, right? Tobias Not, no has question. been balling this year. Tobias has been balling, but again, Tobias is another person that has fucking consistently over the course of his career not played at the same level during the postseason. Tobias is one of those guys that he doesn't disappear. Tobias, you'll look up and he'll have fourteen and seven, and and he'll do that three different times in a in a, in a situation, and he's the second highest paid guy on the team. And you're like, Tobias, can you give us back to back games of twenty plus? And and 12. And it's like, no, that's not what he does. So it's like we never mentioned Tobias Harris as, as the reason why they lose like playoff series or games. But we never mentioned him as the reason why they win them either. So, again, Tobias is another person that I love him. Great dude. If he's going to get to that level, they've got to have guys play above their level in the regular season. That's the only my, that's the only reason why I'm hating on Philly. So who's your team out of the East? No, fuck. I'll take Boston over them. I take Milwaukee over them. I'll take. I I truly stand by this. This is real. If the Knicks and them were to I play right now, someone. if the Knicks and them were to play right now, I'm taking the fucking Knicks. Oh I'm telling you. The only I team I was gonna let you slide by, maybe, would be the Miami Heat. Maybe. Well, we can add them too. We can add them too because we know how gritty and tough those dudes are. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, like you're, I stand by. If the Knicks, if the Knicks, and they're talking about Shane Julius Randall, if if, let's if, do it. if I like what, bets. Jennings said, let's make a bet. If the Knicks and the Sixers play in the playoffs, yeah, I'll, I'll, take the I'll take the Knicks. I'll take the Knicks out. Mitchell Robinson. No, Mitchell Robinson looks like he's going to come back. That's Fuck. why they didn't well, then, get the player. Okay, then that's different. See, that's oh, okay. Different. Wow. Uh, and they got Hartenstein. And Hartenstein's balling. No, my point is, Jenny, wow, you were quick to be like. Dude, Mitchell Robinson, after watching what he does for that team, looking at who they're yeah. got getting. He changed is his the mind, piece. though, didn't he, Allie? Yeah, uh, yeah because quick. that's a huge piece. The big man has made a resurgence. If you right. don't have a big man, you have no chance of winning. The Knicks are 23 and set. They're in the seventh spot. The Sixers, nope. 26. Where's and Miami? 13. Where's Miami? Miami is in the fifth spot, 24 and 16. How about our Cavs? Darius Garland. Quiet. They've been quiet, quiet, but they're back. Dude, sometimes quiet. less is more. Donovan That's said, fine. just get on my back. I saw him at Paris. <laughs> Sorry, really quick. And then we're going to end this episode. Did you guys see that reporter's question to Braun about Ricky Rubio? <laughs> <laughs> Bad timing, bro. There was some lady in there in the comment section that was like, Ricky Rubio is a Spanish legend. The reporter did nothing wrong. I'm like, no, the reporter needed to read the fucking room, right? And the reporter needed to read the room. And it's like, hey, like, I'm going to say, like, this is the way to do this. And I don't tell people how to do the job, but, li but living, in a, living in a locker room, Ali, back me up on this. As a reporter, right, especially if you're a Spanish reporter, you know this. You go to either the, meet, the the head media person or you go to Braun on the side and be like, hey, Braun, 
I understand it's a tough game, but like I would just like to get a couple of words. Like this is when the scrum is not. I'd like to get a couple of words on Ricky Rubio and just. I, I know today's a tough day, but just can you just give us a couple of words? Because the Spanish people, they love him. He's an yeah. icon. Can you give some words? Mm -hmm. Braun in that moment takes a deep breath. All right, who good? But when you're just scrumming it up, and then all no. of a sudden it's a question about Ricky Rubio, you're like. Oh, hey, man, Ricky, you did great, man. Love your career. Like, you can't. That's not how humans work. So great. you has it. Go ahead. Great broadcasting 101 there because, to your point, that isn't a question that needs to be a part of the scrum. But I do recognize and understand that a lot of reporters don't feel like they have any kind of access to players like LeBron. So to your point, going the PR route, that's why they are there to help with situations like that, to be able to set that up on the side, that's not something that needs to be out in the media because I assumed that that was a quote being a part of a larger story. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. you need it. Yes. hundred. Well done, Richard. Yeah. Well, Great advice. I, 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 I have oh. the benefit of being on both sides <laughs> well of the bullshit. You. And it's like, dude, <laughs> yeah. if you're coming off a very depressive moment and you're losing and now you want somebody to give some love to somebody else, it's like, I'm going to do the best. But even Bron said, he's like, hey, Ricky, like if, if my energy is not what it, it is supposed to be is because <laughs> so I'm having funny. a real fucked up night. And Ricky understands that. Ricky understands. That's the part about it that the media is fucking laughing about it. But like, or not the media, but like it turned into a story. Ricky understands. Ricky yeah. understands because Ricky's like, I've been there before. It's like, I'm just glad he gave me what he did. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's LeBron. Cool. But Ricky understands. Ricky's not looking at that situation being like, man, I wasn't cool LeBron. Ricky's yeah. right. You don't get that camera out of my face right now. Yeah. Ricky's like, Ricky, honestly, Ricky probably felt bad for Braun in that moment. For yeah. Sure. In my, because Ricky's one of the nicest yeah. guys in the freaking world. Super nice, dude. Super yeah. nice. Just a good dude. So it's like, if, if Ricky, if Ricky knows, if, or Ricky knows the situation. So Ricky's like, man, that's tough, man. I feel bad for Braun that he got put in that. Po I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you. Richard. What? Okay, I've held this question. This is last question. Last question. Okay, I gotta go. We're going back to Golden State. This is quick. It'll be quick. Oh. We're going back. Right. Okay. Let's say trade deadline. You don't. You, you don't find anything. You don't. There's no good okay. keepers, right? This summer. This summer. What do you do if you have a conversation with Steph, Clay, Draymond? If you don't make the playoffs. Who who is having this conversation and why are all the, the GM? So Mike Dunleavy. So Mike Dunleavy is having a conversation yeah. with them individually, not collectively. Yeah, yeah, individually. Okay, so individually, yeah. right? What they say is, Steph, we are going to put we're going to do our best job because we believe we have a four year window. We're going to try and do our best to put you in a championship situation. That means we will trade all assets. And the other part about them where they're in a tough spot is because they are so bloated in salary. They oh. offered Clay Thompson money, and he didn't want to take it. He felt like he, he deserved more because in the open market, whatever. Anyways, my point is this. What I tell Steph is, Steph, are you open to us trading every single piece here to try well, and put the no. best in? What? What if he says no? Well, Steph, we appreciate your service. <laughs> We're going to go trade every one of these pieces. We're going to trade every one of these pieces to put the best team around it. because you can't trade Steph. Steph yeah. is Steph. Steph, you can't trade Steph. We can say the hypothetically, but from a management standpoint, from a monetary standpoint, from all of those things, what he means to that franchise. If you, the tickets that are $500 now go to $200 when Steph is no longer on that team. The TV ratings, the all of that shit, the corporate boxes that are being sold for $100,000 now get sold for $50,000. So you got to understand the value to his franchise is not just on the court. Now on the court, you need better pieces. And we can say you win a championship. All you want them to do is be a playoff team and be competitive. If they get to the fourth seed, if, if next year they're the fourth seed, that's a win. They lose in the second round. You, they, it's not championship or bust for every single year. It's you just want to try and get to that spot where you can get the rhythm going. That's my thing. And on that note, this has been another edition of the NBC Sports Bay Area Warriors <laughs> podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>